YouTubers won a momentous victory this past week. The benevolent internet overlords sought to bring forth good fortune on the YouTube community. They won in a battle for the never-ending war for the rights of creators everywhere. It all started when YouTube creator PenguinZ0, otherwise known as Critical, otherwise known as Charlie, beloved voice of the real Mighty Thirsty, chess grandmaster, and one of the world's most underrated authors and poets, made a video calling out YouTube about some disturbing content shared on the platform. Charlie spoke about a user on the platform who consistently filmed graphic violence against animals, sometimes even killing them on screen. He pointed out that this user had never received a strike on their channel for this content, though it clearly violated YouTube's content guidelines. Soon after, YouTube removed one of Charlie's videos, citing graphic and disturbing content. And in this video, he talks about an old viral video of a very fake road rage incident in Russia involving people in costumes almost as ridiculous as YouTube's algorithm. The video was taken down and he received a strike on his channel. After repeated attempts to try to get YouTube to manually review and then reinstate the video, it seemed his efforts were futile. In a move entirely unprecedented for our time, our hero took to Twitter to boldly go where no man has gone before, express his grievances and call out a corporation publicly on the internet. He wrote, was going to handle this privately, but it seems there is actually no human review in these things. The video that was taken down and put a strike on my channel is not even a real road rage incident and has no injury, blood, or anything. Not even fake blood or injury. Along with his tweet was a screenshot of the relevant strike YouTube had placed on his channel. Quote, thanks for the screenshot, we'll pass this along so that our team can take another look and update you when we know more, Tim YouTube replied, while totally not giving off disinterested customer service robot vibes. Charlie then replied, thank you. I'd also like to add that this was a staged viral YouTube video, and there are dozens of uploads of it and people talking about it that have been on the platform for five years and have never had a problem with it. Within a little over an hour, or approximately one part of a promised ten-part Shane Dawson docuseries later, YouTube responded again, saying, confirming that a member of the team reviewed the video and the decision stands. Footage containing graphic content, fights, beatings, etc., with the intent to shock, violate our CGs. Since you're in touch with our partner manager, they'll be the best point of contact to answer questions you may have. They seemingly tried to pass him off in the world's worst game of hot potato ever with this response. However, this hot potato was not to be dropped. Instead, it was to be picked up by thousands of fans and lobbed back at YouTube in the greatest ever display of virtual defiance via aerial movement of imaginary vegetables ever made, starting with the hashtag in Charlie's next tweet. Hashtag answer us YouTube. Charlie responded to the standing decision saying, that just confirmed no one watched the video. Everyone I've talked to at YouTube doesn't agree with this decision either. Would love a more thorough explanation for what actually goes on with these reviews. This is followed by the war cry that would send people rallying into battle. Hashtag answer us YouTube. Charlie is nowhere near the first YouTuber to bring up problems with the review process and demanding to see behind the scenes. In fact, there's even a class action lawsuit against YouTube right now that if won in the plaintiff's favor, would require YouTube to open up about their content ID services. As Charlie mentioned in his tweet, it seems a lot of people at YouTube disagree with the platform's own decision. And that's what seems to bother creators the most, the disconnect within the company between departments about applying their own rules. Doubling down, Charlie then pointed out, quote, Markiplier also made a video laughing about the same fake road rage incident. Where's his strike? Don't worry, this is not one of the greatest anime betrayals of all time. To then clarify, he added, Obviously no one should be in trouble for joking about what is clearly a staged video. I'd just like to know why only mine was deemed disturbing and shocking. Markiplier, being the grand old sport he is known as and loved to be, retweeted Charlie, asking, Fair is fair. YouTube, where's my strike? Charlie replied to thank Mark, really hoping YouTube doesn't strike Mark. It's obviously a silly decision in the first place, and I hope YouTube will do the right thing and recognize the strike was a mistake and get rid of it. Thank you, Mark. It seems, though, that robots skipped their common sense update again, as Mark was hit with a strike on his channel shortly thereafter only offering the type of response one might expect from such a dignified denizen of YouTube society. Oh, well, there it is. Mark then clarified that he did not blame Charlie for the incident at all. To be absolutely clear, I don't blame the moistest man on the internet critical for all this. Fair is fair, and if this is the game that YouTube wants to play, I've got my SpongeBob costume on and I'm ready to throw hands. Now that would be quite the episode. 
What would the theme song be? Who gives their creators strikes so unfairly? It's Team YouTube. Who then got called out by Mark and Charlie? It's Team YouTube. Clearly shocked by this turn of events, Charlie then stated, quote, I'm absolutely shocked YouTube is deciding to die on this hill, striking even the most wholesome creator on their site, rather than admit it was a mistake in the first place. He then offered a hypothetical, but one we at the show don't think is too far-fetched, asking, what's next, YouTube, striking every WWE video for fake violence as well? After having thoroughly given Team YouTube a tombstone pile driver, fans and creators piled in from around the internet to give YouTube the world's largest simultaneous clothesline maneuver, as thousands of fans tweeted contradictions on YouTube's platform, stating that YouTube would strike Charlie's video but leave actual graphic content such as physical abuse, true crime videos, and more up on their site, Charlie went back to the battleground itself, uploading an aptly titled video, I'm Mad, a title with a level of brevity that we at the Hilltop Show could only aspire to. In the video, Charlie summarizes our tale thus far. He talks about how YouTube has failed to sufficiently address serious issues on their platform, namely the issues he has brought up recently, the animal abuse channels. Charlie expresses his frustration with the platform at having their priorities in the wrong place when it comes to addressing problems on their site, further giving prudence to a Hilltop Show writer's theory that YouTube has somehow secretly created a new breed of Hydra, which allows them to ignore actual solutions to issues and instead create something new in the name of improvement, which actually ends up causing two new problems. Charlie puts it like this. I really just don't get YouTube's priorities. They are so quick to ban a channel like Leafy is here because he made too many Pokemane videos, but they will take their sweet time in actually addressing real crimes like child abuse. And you remember Daddy05, the family that was abusing their children for views and subscribers on YouTube for a long time? Authorities had to like beg YouTube to do something about it before they actually finally acted on it. They just seem to be so reluctant to actually address real crimes and problems like animal abuse and child abuse, it really feels like they just don't give a f At least, not about things that matter. Charlie then goes on to talk about how he and his company have had a pretty solid relationship in working with YouTube in the past and getting the issues resolved, particularly with the partnership division. However, he echoed both the sentiments he stated in his earlier tweets and ones that creators who have had to go through similar circumstances have expressed. This is out of their hands. This is not any of their departments. This goes to some rogue syndicate Illuminati shadow splinter cell division that I guess they just lock in cells or trap in dark cages for decades until they lose touch with humanity and they treat them like zoo animals because this department is so disconnected from the most basic understanding of human concepts. They believed my road rage video was genuine, shocking, disgusting, and overwhelmingly disturbing to the point that it needed to be removed from the platform. Which is f***ing weird that they felt that way about a staged road rage video, but don't feel that for videos where their animals are being brutally murdered by baseball bats and blood and guts are flying all over the f***ing place, even in the thumbnail. It's weird that they feel that for a fake road rage incident where Spongebob is throwing a few slaps to a man. He goes on to discuss the problems that are being exposed at YouTube on the corporate level, that there's little, if any, contact between departments, especially the review department. He talks about how that creates a serious problem. No one can actually be on the same page. It also doesn't help with the rumors that no human actually manually reviews the videos, and instead, it's just a bunch of Google's latest and greatest mock for John Wick-inspired drones. Every department I've talked to has no direct means of communication with them, and I'm talking heads of these departments have no way of getting in contact with this group here. You know how alarming that is? They actually shared with me the message they sent in regards to the road rage video they took down. They, it is, it's two lines. It is one line that says, we are maintaining our decision to keep the video down. And the second line is a copy and paste of the rules regarding shocking content that's taken right off the, uh, right off the Google help page. That's it. There's no conversation. There's no proof that a human being even wrote that email. It is literally looking like an automated reply. That is what they sent to a head of one of these departments who put, tried to get in contact and fix this issue. Finally, Charlie adds that this video was recorded very soon after his first tweet, and he fully expected that by the time it went up for YouTube to have replied to him on Twitter saying he violated the rules and the decision stands. He was right, I, I guess we can possibly add Oracle onto his list of titles growing nearly as fast as his hair. He ends the video by talking about the hashtag answer is YouTube and his hopes that if people rally around enough, perhaps YouTube will finally give them the answers they seek. 
The next day, Markiplier himself made a video on the situation, first talking about how he just received his first ever strike on his channel, and how it was also for violent and graphic content. Mark quickly describes the video similarly to Charlie, putting emphasis on the fact that he had reacted to it in a Try Not To Laugh video, further showing that the graphic video was not, in fact, graphic, but instead comedic. Mark begins discussing his own frustrations toward the shadowy and extremely frustrating process behind the YouTube scenes that is apparently so top secret, not even his King of Five Nights at Freddy's status could get him access. And you can see for yourself how this video is not in any way actually violence. It's a joke, but not according to the manual review system. Who's making these calls? We don't know. Who's giving these answers? YouTube doesn't know. Who's talking to YouTube and YouTube that YouTube has to fight YouTube against or YouTube has to check YouTube with? Who knows? Much like Charlie, he discusses that the video itself getting taken down is not a problem. Rather, that it's the unclear and unfair practices behind the process that are setting bad precedents and damaging the platform with its inaccessibility. The problem is there's clearly an issue with improper application or at least uneven application of YouTube's community guidelines. And moreover, there's a communication issue at the heart of it all. Now, I want to be very clear. I'm not against the rules themselves. Those rules are there for a reason, and there is content that falls within those rules that should be taken down. Mark goes on to talk about how he agrees that the rules are there for good reason, and how everyone can agree that actual graphic content shouldn't be on the platform. After citing the massive amount of content uploaded to YouTube each day, he goes back to Charlie's point about the animal abuse channel still being up, mentioning that with the sheer amount of content, it would take an astronomical amount of people to work around the clock to review every video on the site for content violations. He brings all this up to make the point that YouTube doesn't have to do that because they have the viewer moderating system where videos can be flagged and reported by viewers for violating community guidelines. Thousands of people are watching these videos around the clock multiple times, and most times would be able to communicate to YouTube whether there are actually such violations. But again, the review department at YouTube has Jimmy Kimmel on loop in both ears, so they won't listen. Mark goes on to offer a very common sense solution. Let's say, for example, this clip was actually bad, which it's not, but let's just say, for example, you know what they could have done to handle it? They could have reached out. They could have just talked to us. They could have asked us to take it down. I'd like to think that we have a good reputation. You know, if a channel is actually in good standing with no strikes, why can't they ask us to do it for them? Why not ask us to self-moderate? I, I don't know if you know this, but YouTube actually has a feature where you can go into any video that you've already uploaded, even if it's public, and you can go out and you can trim out sections of the video anytime. And you'll save it, and then like within a few hours, it'll reprocess it, and everyone will never see that part again and many people won't even know that it was gone. So if you have someone in good standing, why not ask them to cut out the things that are a problem? If the whole video is not the issue, and it's only a small clip of them, why not talk to the creators? And if they don't do it, or if they don't make a good enough case for an appeal, then use your own tools that you have and do it for them. And then give them a strike. Do it then! You know what I mean? Be like, all right, you gotta take care of this, or it's a problem, or we're gonna give you a strike. And I can be like, look, it's not. I'll make my case, here it is, here's my case. And if I'm actually having communication with someone, and someone comes back to me and is like, look, I get it, I get it, but it, we can't take the risk in some circles. Maybe someone might assume that it is, and they might get hurt or offended by it, and I'm like, all right, fine, fine, I'll do it, you know? But at least the whole video isn't down. I'll just trim out that part, and they're like, okay, that's good, thank you, that we, we reached a middle ground. Mark clarifies that he knows there are people at YouTube who do care, including his contact. But the massive problem is that those people who do care are having to constantly fight for the creators and fight against who, you may ask. No one knows. For all we know, YouTube's employees could be battling it out with the costume road ragers in the video. We were worried about possibly getting a strike of our own by including this clip, but if we do, awesome. We can add YouTube to our ever-growing list of adversaries. Mark ends the video by simply asking YouTube to remove the strikes, reinstate the videos, and to simply trust in their site's community a bit more, taking their criticisms seriously, and reviewing the actual harmful content that has been called out. Interestingly enough, around 40 minutes after Mark uploaded that video, YouTube put out a statement on Twitter to Charlie, 
Update, we're not going to die on this hill. You were right. After even further review, your video and others are back up and these strikes have been removed. This was an over-enforcement of our policies, especially with the added context and commentary as you originally pointed out. YouTube rarely ever admits to being in the wrong, let alone saying you were right. Whoa! This is epic! But the fact that it took such a monumental uprising for such a small problem reveals larger issues still at play. YouTube commentator Mr. GG responded, This is great and all, but it took Critical, Markiplier, and dozens of other large YouTubers speaking out to get an even further review, aka someone took the time out of their busy day to just actually watch the four and a half minute video. I'll be honest, that sucks. YouTube tweeted back at Mark saying, This is definitely not the game we want to play. We're so sorry for the confusion and frustration here. Your video and others are back up and the associated strikes have been removed. Mark and Charlie both tweeted their thanks to YouTube for resolving the issue and hoping for a better working relationship in the future. Mark said, I appreciate the reinstatement and apology. I'm willing to accept that mistakes can happen and hope we can work together to minimize the chance that it'll happen in the future. I'll take the SpongeBob costume off for now. Charlie said, absolutely fantastic news. I think we're all thankful to hear you were willing to go back and reevaluate the decision. It means a lot to creators to see that. Hopefully we can all have more open dialogue when it comes to things like this in the future. Thank you. Then Charlie, shining in the afterglow of his victory, like Aragorn in The Return of the King, made a final video entitled, We Won a Battle. In it, he recaps the situation so far, leading up to YouTube overturning the decision. Charlie reiterates the point brought up by both he, Markiplier, and many other creators over the years. YouTube needs to fight their own internal demons. The rampant transparency and communication issues between not only creators in the company, but departments within the platform shows they have not yet reached the main arc of their manga. Markiplier also brings light to another issue where he mentions his partner manager has to fight for him at YouTube's headquarters to get things like this handled. And that's a big problem that there has to be a fight for creators. How everyone's not on the same page so people have to fight with each other to get things working the right way. I mentioned something similar, how my contacts at YouTube like Dominic are absolutely wonderful. But they have to like step into the... Thunderdome like it's the Colosseum and fight for their lives to get these things handled and fight for the creators. That's a problem that YouTube has to have this kind of internal fight to get things going because not everyone's on the same page. Charlie ends the video once again thanking everyone for their support, especially Markiplier, YouTube for their reversal and his wishes that this incident can lead to positive change. In the pinned comments, obviously there is still a lot that YouTube has to address, but I think it's important to recognize the impact of winning this albeit small battle. YouTube rarely listens to the community when it comes to decisions they make internally, and the fact that we were able to get them to listen this time is absolutely huge. Hopefully the next step will be them addressing the numerous other problems that have been brought up recently and act on them. While we at the Hilltop Show agree, we can't help but wonder what the next steps will be for YouTube. Running a platform ourselves, though admittedly not as big, yet, we are constantly having conversations about how to improve, as any organization without socks in their ears should do. We hope to see some real change at YouTube, not only in the way they conduct YouTube rewinds, but their interactions with the community as a whole. So. Say that you aren't a YouTuber, and the only time you interact with YouTube is to watch Adele clips and Crash Course World History videos. Why does this story matter to you? Well, YouTube is one of the biggest platforms in the world for creators to share their work. For YouTube, the corporation, to be communicating so poorly with its own community, it leads to uneven application of these rules, censoring the innocent work of good intention creators while some other harmful content continues to be available for view. As Markiplier pointed out, YouTube has the community tools of manual reporting to prevent this. They just need to start listening. This story is of interest to anyone who uses the internet, for any purpose. Unjust censorship and the mass dissemination of videos depicting inhumane acts of violence are the consequences of this. YouTube not communicating clearly with its users normalizes that disorganization and censorship, and other platforms across the internet may follow suit. Also, we totally understand that what we are asking of YouTube here is an enormous task. Markiplier put it best in the video we mentioned earlier. I should put in perspective just how big 
YouTube actually is. Some of you may already know this, but um, it's it's something like, as of May of 2019, YouTube gets approximately 500 hours of video uploaded every single minute. If you thought I was gonna say hour or day, you were dead wrong, minute. That turns into 30,000 hours of content per hour, 720,000 hours per day, which is 82 years of content every day. And in that content is obviously going to be some pretty messed up shit, which is why YouTube has this community guidelines in the first place. And which is why we are all agreeing that that should be taken down. Anything that actually falls within the rules should be but it's not. So we think that with this piece, we've put forward both sides of the issue here. YouTube has a lot of content to sift through, but creators don't want stuff that doesn't deserve to be taken down to be taken down. Catch y'all later. Bye-bye! Well, YouTube is one of the biggest platforms in the world for creators to share their work. For YouTube, the corporation, to be inter- bleh, bleh. <laughs> My bad. All right.